welcome to the Voice of Wisdom. With over 60 years of experience as an investment banker, entrepreneur, investment analyst, economist, and venture capitalist, Morty Davis is Wall Street and capitalism personified. The over 400 companies for which he has raised more than $3 billion over the years have created a countless number of jobs and exciting new products. Through the voice of wisdom, Mr. Davis explores, analyzes, and debates the most topical political, economic, and social issues facing our world today. Joining Mr. Davis today for a discussion of today's news headlines, including how our courts will play a key role in our upcoming elections, is Lynn Carter. Len is an investment banker, business consultant, and private investor. And now, Mr. Davis and Mr. Carter. Welcome back, Mr. Carter. <laughs> and welcome uh, to um, the conference, the debate, the whatever, between myself and this brilliant associate of myself, great friend and genius who graduated from the same school as I did, Harvard Business School, at the top of his class. So I'm delighted to have Mr. Carter back again. I'm sure you'll enjoy him. Um, <clears throat> before I get into the discussion or debate on today's issues, which was uh, sent to you, uh, I hopefully you received them earlier today, I want to give you an upbeat because you're so special to me. I love you all. You add to my wisdom. My program is called Morty Davis, the Voice of Wisdom. And you add to my wisdom every week. Even the ones that are mean to me and critical of me, I look at what they, what they propose or what they argue for and they make me think, and that's the whole purpose of, uh, of growing. You learn from others, just like um, teachers say they learn more from their students than from any, anywhere else. So <clears throat> I learn more from you, from your contacts, your calls, your uh, written uh, communications with me. So I appreciate it. Keep it up. And tell all your friends about the program, and let's uh, enjoy each other's company for many, many years to come till you're all 120. Then I'll negotiate for more on your behalf. Um, <clears throat> before I launch, because I love you so much, and I wrote this phenomenal book, Happiness Guaranteed, or your money, or your misery back, not your money back. I'll give you your money, your money back if you don't find it. Great. And the reason I say it, it's not my opinion that I'm expressing because I'm, I'm not that uh, conceited or <laughs> braggadocio, but all the people who have bought it without exception, I haven't had one person that says anything negative about this book, which is most unusual. Maybe they just want to be nice to me, but I've gotten so much praise and how much help it's given them to be uplifted and to get more happiness. So I want to tell you all at the beginning of each program, so I give you some idea how to be happier. The first thing is be happy, don't worry. Be happy, don't worry. Be happy, don't worry. You're in control. It's your attitude that makes you happy or miserable. So make sure your attitude is optimistic, upbeat, Always believe that things will get better, although it's hard to believe in these times. And I fight with my own kids who have changed. Uh, I've changed. They said, Dad, why, why, why have you changed? All the ideas, all the thoughts that we're expressing, we got from you. So I'm having such war with friends, with, with, with my extended, my whole family and my extended family. Even your brother now. Even my brother, right? I was in England. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, I, I really enjoy their insights, even though they don't agree with me, and I surely don't love them any, any less. But I want to read something to you or tell you something. Let's see if I could get this here. 
Just one second, bear with me. Please read slowly. One. Can you have it? Food in your yes. fridge, clothes on your body, a roof over your head, and a place to sleep. You're richer than 75% of the entire world. Two. If you have money in your wallet to spend as you wish and to go anywhere you want, you are among the top 18% of the world's wealthy people. Three, if you are alive today with more health than illness, you are more blessed than the million people who will not survive this week and die. Four, if you can actually read this message and understand it, you are more fortunate than the three billion people in the world who cannot see, cannot read, Life is not for complaining about pain and sorrows. It's about prioritizing a thousand other reasons to be grateful and happy. I hope you heard that message. But the idea is to prioritize and decide that you're going to be happy and count your blessings every single day. All the blessings we have, we, uh, we take for granted. And it isn't until we're deprived of them particularly things like your house, which, which is free, has no cost, and you own it till, till you're ill or suffering from the uh, diseases and the maladies that human beings suffer from. So don't wait to appreciate it till it's gone. Appreciate it every day. And the same with, with uh, your relationship with your kids, with your, those, your best friends. Make sure you tell them often how much you, you appreciate them, how much you love them. And do love them, because it doesn't last forever. And to the extent you do that, you get the dividends that derive from that relationship. So without further ado, enough about happiness. You could return to your misery. And now we'll, we'll add, maybe, <laughs> I hope not. Add to your misery or add to your uh, knowledge and wisdom. Uh, what's the first uh, issue that our producer uh, raised? So a lot's, uh, a lot's going on now with our courts and how they will, particularly the highest court, will be playing a very key role in the upcoming election. So there's at least at least three areas where we see that. The first just happened yesterday. Um, Colorado Supreme Court uh, decided <clears throat> to uh, decided on a on a case where Donald Trump would be barred from being on the Colorado ballot mm -hmm. based on their finding that he participated in an insurrection and. Under the 14th Amendment, anyone who participated in an insurrection is ineligible for a uh, president. You know, there, there's, a, there's a debate over whether that's right or wrong. You know, is, is, is there, did, did Trump participate in an insurrection? What is an insurrection? Does the, does the court it, particularly a Colorado court, a state court, have the right to make that decision. And um, without, some people say, due process, without a trial, without Trump being able to defend himself on saying it was not an insurrection. And um, what fallout that could happen. So right now, he is he's off the ballot, but um, I believe <clears throat> based on the timing of the, of the decision, he is, he, he could, he, he's still on the, the um, primary ballot and what, what the Supreme court does in terms of hearing the case and ruling on the case and the timing of that ruling Will depend. Will determine whether Trump's on the Colorado ballot on, in the general election. So he'll likely be on the ballot in the primary, 
Uh, but it's the general election that's the bigger question. So I guess the first question is, what's your take on that? Do you think that, um, you know, a, a, the, the whole process that has gone through here is the right decision? Did the court do the right thing? What will the Supreme Court, what will, two questions with the Supreme Court, what will they do and what should they do? Because sometimes what we may think or you may think or I may think they should do is different from what they will do. Uh, let me start off by <clears throat> making it more clear exactly what the issue is and what we're talking about because as um, alert and as wise as my fellow participants in my podcast, all my precious listeners and uh, the, who share this every Wednesday evening at 6.30 with me may not be as illuminated or, or uh, on top of things political as you and I tend to be. And most people don't get into this as seriously as we, we would hope they would, but they have other priorities. They're bringing up children, they're, they're working, so they don't have time to, to watch all the Fox or MSNBC or CNN or read, read their newspapers as much. So this event rose to the um, headlines just yesterday. And it evolved in this way. It, it, it's funny how all these events, the news, no matter what news you listen to, yeah. always start with the first, with the same first phrase. This is unprecedented. Because <laughs> every, right. every, and it's, it's become almost, you become almost right. jaded to the unprecedentedness right. of this whole thing. Every single thing. To have a president who's twice impeached the forerunner, to have a president barred from a, a ballot by a state, never been done before, never happened, Not, none of this has ever happened, it's all unprecedented. Yeah, and on, on, the, <laughs> on these major uh, 24 news channels, and even on other channels, they flesh it as breaking news. Breaking, that's constantly it, breaking news. It is. It's exactly. correct to call it breaking <laughs> news because it's breaking up families. <laughs> it's breaking up the country. That's right. But it is breaking news. So the breaking news about this way. <clears throat> Some lawyers in Colorado brought a lawsuit to prevent um, Trump from getting on the ballot. ballot. If you don't get on the ballot, you can be voted for. So that's really eliminating, if they succeed, eliminating Trump from participating in the election. So we went to court, and in the lower court, district court, in the district court, the woman judge who handled that very bright woman, and well thought out, and she actually held that Donald Trump participated excuse me my phone rang yes we were talking <clears throat> that Donald Trump led an insurrection she said nevertheless it says under 14 uh, Article 14 of the Constitution that just like you can run for president if you're under 35 or you can run for president of the United States unless you were native born in this country. Qualifications. So also it says if you participated in an insurrection, you violated the Constitution you couldn't run for president. So she said he did participate in, in an insurrection, but since he wasn't an officer 
of the government. I don't know how she came up with that. Uh, it should not be prohibited from running for, for the mayor. It's the, it's the idea of presidential went, immunity. Right. So it went to the um, higher court. State in, Supreme in, Court. In, in Colorado, not the United States Supreme Court, but the Colorado Supreme Court. And they held in a vote of four to three that they agreed with her that there was an insurrection, but they disagreed that Donald Trump was not an officer and that, therefore, he was subject to the prohibition of Article 4. That's bringing you right up to date. It's probably going to, incidentally, uh, it was also brought up in Mississippi and rejected. Um, they said uh, they can't keep Donald Trump off the ballot. I don't know if they held it. There wasn't, it wasn't part of an insurrection. I didn't learn the details of that rejection, but they they turned it down. So they have just the opposite of the Colorado Supreme Court. So it's surely going to go to the um, uh, 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 Donald Trump's uh, president, ex-president Trump's uh, lawyers have already prepared uh, an appeal to the Supreme Court. And it's probably going to get handled quickly because in Colorado, the expiration for appearing, uh, appearing getting your ballot on the um, forms to vote in the primaries uh, is January 5th. So that's only about, uh, what, about less than three weeks or about three weeks. Yeah. So the feeling is that they'll probably act on it soon. Or sit on it. Or sit on it. And then let him go on the primary and see what happens in other states yeah. and, and then deal it's with not, it. Yeah, it's not necessarily a lot of times the court the, likes to do yeah, that. They just kind of... It's definitely not the end of the line yeah. if he doesn't get on by January 5th. Yeah. But if he doesn't get on somewhere by... Well, what is it called? The... Um, there's one Tuesday. Super Tuesday. Super Tuesday. I think it's in February sometime. Mm -hmm. Isn't it February or March? I think it's, I think it's March somewhere. When, when there's about eight to ten states yeah. that have their primaries, and that that day tends to determine who's the winner. Not always, but overwhelmingly. So we're interest, We're um, going to be. Um, not subjected to, but uh, um, not addressed to, but uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Exposed to, or even but there's a better word than that, to this discussion to the next. Subjected to. <laughs> it says subjected to, but it, subjected to sounds like. We're being tortured. No. <laughs> Maybe so. We're going to be, uh, <laughs> we're gonna be, you know, uh, made aware of, uh, educated. I don't know. I need a thesaurus to, to get the word I'm looking for, the right word. As Mark Twain said, the difference between the right word, uh, uh, the almost right word and the right word is there's the difference between a, a firefly and a lightning. Lightning, yeah, it gets, hits you. A firefly, it gives a little uh, light, you know. So I didn't, I, I didn't give you the right word, but it'll come to me. But anyway, we're going to be um, uh, treated to the. Uh, to the debate that goes on at the Supreme Court and at the other courts, and whether it stays at the state courts, people that, that are against this uh, Colorado uh, decision say it's not right for the states to, to make this decision. It's one that should be made by a, a federal court, it's specifically uh, the Supreme Court or the next lower court. And also, they they argue, and and some people feel strongly strongly about this, 
even though they may agree with with the law, it hasn't been tested in all these years. It's never come up before. But they say that it shouldn't be the courts that choose our president or our candidates for president. It should be the voters. So that's another argument. The courts should stay out of it, put them on the ballot, and let the public, let the voters decide. But if, if the Constitution says once he's the, the candidate, the potential candidate, is accused of insurrection, <clears throat> as held uh, for insurrection, um, he can, not merely accused, but found that participated in an insurrection, or led in an insurrection, he cannot vote. So, uh, and... Yeah, that's why it goes to qualification. I mean, the voters may want someone who's 30 years old to be president, right. but they're just not qualified. They cannot, under the Constitution, be president. So as much as the voters may want that, it, it can't be. That The argument that people make against that, that the voters should decide, is that it goes to qualifications. And, you know, it's interesting because the the... 14th Amendment came out after the Civil War to prevent, you know, secessionists who talk about an insurrection right. um, from, from participating in high office. And, you know, uh, I was listening to John Bolton last night, Trump's former security advisor, who now is not a big fan of right. Donald Trump, saying he, he doesn't think this is an insurrection. He said it. You look at the Civil War, 600,000 Northern soldiers died and over years, and this is, that's an insurrection. You know, this is more of a riot, he said. So, the, view, the, the views of the, what is the, an, the is various, various politicians are influenced by their political views. So he's got a bias one way, a lot of brilliant I watch guys that are constitutional experts saying it definitely was, and I watched it, and, and it was definitely an insurrection. And the court, look, the court. And, and the president did nothing about it uh, at the time, so it was an insurrection. But, you know. But, but I think the real, the, the strongest argument that people have, and why the Supreme Court will, I think, likely allow Trump to be on the ballot everywhere, is, you know, he hasn't been found. Yeah, that's guilty he hasn't been, by a court. Right. So he has it's like a it is kind of like a kangaroo court right. where the son, oh he, he hasn't had a child. The, he has they, they did have this the Colorado courts I don't know if it was the um uh the lower court or the state supreme court. They did have what they called like a kind of a bench trial sort of thing where they examined evidence and they looked at things and they used some of the January 6th you know, uh, testimonies and based on you know, finding a fact, that's where they said this is the case. So It's really based but, on your political views because I remember watching every program related to this for two or three weeks before January 6th. And I heard them predict, especially Steve Bannon, predict, watch what happens on January 6th. It's going to be someday. You know, I, I can't quote Even Trump it. said, going to be wild. That's yeah, what he said on his wild, Twitter. Right. It's going to be wild. Yeah. <laughs> he was and right. then earlier in the debate, he said they were asking <clears> about something, about some group, and they were criticizing that group, and he said, Stand back and uh, yeah. I forget the exact quote. Stand by, stand, stand down. by, and stand back. Damn. He yeah. was encouraging his people to to fight the uh, <laughs> the conclusion that he that he lost the um, election. So he was. But it reminds me of that movie where a guy uh, is in bed with a woman, and suddenly his wife walks in. And she says, oh, my God, what are you doing? And the young lady who was in bed with her husband 
grabs her things. She was totally nude. Grabs her things and runs out. And the wife starts screaming and yelling. And he says, what are you yelling about? He goes to the bathroom for a minute to clean up a little. He comes back and she starts screaming. He says, what are you, what are you uh, talking about? There was no woman here. He says, yeah, but I saw her with my own eyes. What are you telling me? He says, what are you going to believe, me or your eyes? You know? What are you going to believe? So the same thing. They're telling me there was no insurrection. But I watched the, the thing. If, if that was an insurrection, I don't know what is. Especially if he tells the vice president, disregard the Constitution. Don't do what the Constitution says. It's your duty to do. Bring the votes of the Electoral College to the Congress. A simple thing to do. And Pence's people, advisors, tell them he can't do that. He can't ignore the Constitution. So Pence, who loved Trump and wanted to, uh, and through his four years, uh, followed him in every, he was the biggest um, supporter of, of Trump, the biggest suck up, if you would, of Trump, but he, he didn't follow Trump's urging. And then he encouraged his, his people so right after that. Some of them were saying, if they caught up to Pence, his life was in danger. So um, it was definitely an insurrection. Although people, but, but what you said is right uh, about some people saying he, said he wasn't uh, convicted. He didn't have a trial, so you can't. Some people say he did have a trial. Yeah. The Senate, his impeachment yeah. trial in the Senate. Yeah. You know, that was a trial. Absolutely. So, you know, they're, in, that, fact, in fact, Trump's, Trump's are, uh, lawyers are arguing as part of the, this um, case that exactly. Jack, Jack Smith is bringing about whether Trump has official presidential immunity. They're, they're arguing that all this is double jeopardy. You know, that, that he's, he's being, tr you know, tried or, or prosecuted for a crime that he's already been, been prosecuted. prosecuted for and found innocent, not yeah. guilty, no. not guilty. Not guilty. So, the you know, Senate, the Senate found guilty by the House well, of Representatives. He was indicted by the House. Yeah, he was House accused of, of whatever high he crimes, wasn't really... but he wasn't found guilty of those high crimes and misdemeanors right. by the Senate. Right. So to a lot of people, that was a trial. Right. And so to try him again, or to, to bring these charges again is double jeopardy. Right. I don't know. You're doing a good job of representing <laughs> I, uh, Trump or his, <laughs> and or his lawyers. Better than his lawyers. No, lawyers no, the, the other thing, everyone, and including Trump, they think if it goes to the Supreme Court, it's in, it's in the bag because I appointed three guys onto the Supreme Court and they owe me, right? They owe me. Mm -hmm. But I think one thing that Trump may find out is that, you know, even though these guys were appointed by Trump, they, they sometimes, they sometimes, you know, they don't have fealty to him the way other elected people do. And because they're originalists, you know, this, this idea that this, this next thing that the court is focused, will be looking at is what Jack uh, Smith brought, which is question of whether Trump has presidential immunity. Jack Smith for the he's evidence. a special, press, special he, counsel that Biden appointed to do this. That Biden didn't appoint Who appointed him? him. Oh, the, uh, uh, Merrick Garland. Yeah, Merrick, Merrick Garland. Garland. The so head, the head of the DOJ, the Attorney General. Department. So um, that's a big question because the whole Jack Smith's whole case goes away if Trump had president has presidential immunity because he was acting in his official capacity as president. So but it's, it's, the question is, and that's one that Meadows argued and has been rejected, which is he was acting in his role as president and the court held against uh, Meadows and probably likewise against, against Trump, because it was more related to his campaign for re-election than any, that, that's not a presidential uh, duty or a role. Right. 
So where the, the court, this court is, you know, prides itself on being, or the majority, originalists, right? So they, and I think it's likely that they could, under that originalist yeah. philosophy, wind up ruling against Trump based on that originalist philosophy. Yeah, so, but the originalist is only uh, politically uh, interpreted. In other words, Scalia is an originalist. But he didn't interpret the uh, the Second Amendment, which says a well-armed uh, militia. That's how did he explain the preface? A well-armed militia. Uh, the men are uh, even that then I think it was just men were were allowed to have uh, firearms. The, uh, if you're an originalist, you should look at the exact language, you know. I mean, you know, even with uh, in Judaism, where you're supposed to take every word in the Bible as it's the be all and the end all. As, so if you're an originalist, you say it says an eye for an eye. We don't practice that. We we tend to interpret it in a in a way that is more sensitive, more more considerate, more humane. So, and the best proof of the, that. That judges act most often, not at the Supreme Court, because in the Supreme Court they say let the voters select the um, president. But in 2000, instead of having a recount or something, uh, they, the Supreme Court, which had five to four Republicans over Dem Democrats, the Bush won five to four, and it would never went back to checking the vote one more time and at least if you checked it one more time you'd have uh, you know so that's that's all you know, but I, no but i wanted to point out that after uh, trump was accused of having lost the uh, republicans and, and the MAGA people uh and his lawyers sued in 60 different courts, 61, one court, one judge took it under advisement, but it never went anywhere. The other 60 courts, most of whose judges were appointed by Trump, all held that there was absolutely no evidence, no proof, anything that, they, that was brought to them or that they could find that allowed them to say that he was wrongly treated or that uh, Biden didn't win the election. But, I mean, so, and they were appointed by, as you pointed out. Yeah, but the, I mean, the court could have given Trump the election in 2020. When that amicus brief that, what's his name, the Johnson speaker was uh, instrumental in, that went right to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said, we don't want to hear it. No. You know, if they said we do want to hear it and ruled in Trump's favor just because they wanted Trump to be president, yeah. they could have done that. They that's didn't. What, that's what uh, Trump told us beat up on Pence. If you right. just, uh, you, you didn't have to do anything except not deliver it. We could have had a new election or, or better still, uh, an election by the legislatures of the 50 states. And since the Republicans had control of more legislations, throughout the states. Uh, he could have he could have been appointed president by the legislatures, by state legislators. So he could have by, by electoral college candidates that every state would then appoint. They would have disregarded what Pence brought. So, you know, we'll see. I mean I don't it's I'm not I'm not convinced that just because three, or just because there's a super conservative majority on the court, that Trump has it in the bag. You can't call it. Yeah. I don't think so. I mean, if it were, you know, lower courts, I mean, you look at like this ruling with the mythopristine on the abortion pill, where the judge in Texas, you know, um, <clears throat> wants or upheld the ruling that that, Who's Christine? Mythopristine, the abortion pill. Oh. So the judge in Texas 
who's very, very anti-abortion, um, says that it was never properly approved by the FDA and therefore can't be sold in the country. It wasn't approved by the FDA? It was. FDA it was it. approved. But what, how can he say that? Because... He could say it. He could say, <laughs> I mean, it. that's what, yeah. the, there was a case brought. I'm not sure what evidence they had, but but they they looked at the, you know, the findings and the, the process and they determined, look, he wanted to rule in against it. So in the case, and it's going to go to the Supreme Court. If the Supreme Court, you know, wants to rule, you know, that's it, it, to create a, a backdoor prohibition on abortion, it, it will be able to, um, although there are other drugs that can be used. But I think in those cases, it seems there's a lot more political motivation. In the Supreme Court, we'll see. I mean, maybe I have more confidence in the Supreme Court than I should, but, but uh, clear, you know, clear. whether they say it's double jeopardy, that's, that's I don't know. I mean, you think it's, it's do you think the impeachment trial counts as an insurrection trial, and he really was found not guilty of insurrection by the Senate? No. <clears throat> it's now more clear than ever that when you're dealing with human issues, human beings, <clears throat> you can't convince 100% of the people. You can bring facts, and, and we remain at odds with each other. It's really sad. The only good news I heard this week was Bezos, <clears throat> who's the richest, uh, second richest, the third richest man in the world, right after Musk, <clears throat> and is very involved as Musk is with outer space. It says we have to prepare to to have human beings in outer space, at least a trillion human beings in various planets and that'll help the world survive and help the human race survive so that's uh you know i thought you were going to say the only good news you heard was news you didn't hear <laughs> like the only true. happy people we know are the ones no, but I, I, I heard a better reservation to yeah, well, I, I, with pesos, with <laughs> I don't know i mean there's so much un, undeveloped wide open land in the world you drive across the country, you see about hundreds and hundreds yeah, but, of miles. Yeah. Why, why, why build because the, moon bases? Because when you can leave the global warming <laughs> and the people that say yeah, but even, the existential... Even so. The, 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 the human beings are existentially threatened. Yeah, but they, they won't be able to but I think live the, on the, this planet. But the climate, e e even under global warming is is more hospitable than the moon. I mean, the moon is like... Well, <laughs> you know, there are so many that will, will live in things that we bring there, you know. Uh, but forget about global warming. There's every indication that any weapon that it was ever developed by the human being, it's sad commentary about that how civilized we were, but supposedly we're always getting more civilized, we get less civilized, because at the beginning, we could only <clears throat> hurt somebody by being close to them and picking up a rock or a bat or something, a branch and hitting them. And as we advanced the guns and the cannons and the all kinds of things, and now to nuclear weapons, the nuclear weapon told, and I believe it, that the nuclear weapons today could likely wipe out the whole planet. So you don't have to believe in global warming. There's a lot of ways that we're ex existently, our existence is threatened. So that's what uh, you can't, you can't uh, second get, get Bezos because everything he's ever touched that's right. He bought. Uh, I was wondering why he bought uh, Trader Joe's or something. Did he Whole buy Foods. Trader Joe's? Whole Foods. Oh, Whole Foods. Yeah. yeah. Whole Foods. You know what did he? What did he need Whole Foods? Every new move he's ever made so far just makes him richer and richer and richer. So he owns the Washington Post. So 
Trump had some. Well, that's Amazon's, a liberal. Amazon's that's been a kind liberal of dead money, but what? the stock's been kind of dead money for a few years. Dead money? Yeah, I mean, it hasn't really. You know, certainly not like some of these other high flyers, Microsoft's at all time highs, right. Nvidia, those kinds of things. <clears throat> um, all right, so the, the, let's look, let's talk about the it third thing. Have, uh, unlike uh, Jesus, it, it doesn't have to come back to life because it hasn't died. Yeah, <laughs> it's still a very vibrant uh, company with yeah. enormous profits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so the another thing the court is. Having an impact and a role in, <clears throat> somewhat controversially, is gag orders. So, you know, Trump is not one to want to keep his so thoughts in the so so Tell the audience, uh, our podcast partners, why why the gag order was was issued. I guess. It was because Trump was uh, criticizing um, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> witnesses, witnesses, not only criticizing, intimidating, intimidating, you know, and and the law clerks. Uh, you know, it, it was it never occurred before. It's it's, it's unbelievable, unprecedented. unprecedented again, right? <laughs> So the judge said, "You better cut that out. That's wrong." Right. And he put a gag order on. Although he did say he could trash Jack Smith. Did he? Yeah. yeah. So why well, is under he, free speech? So where where is the free speech argument there? I mean, why why is it? Well, we why, know it's not unlimited. He, but free speech is not unlimited. You can't cut out a fire in a theater. Right. But you can't, you can't names. say you can't say kill somebody. Correct. So you know. But he didn't do that. No, but if you intimidate witnesses, they may not come it's forward. They, they may not come forward so to that's testify. That's witness tampering. Or worse than that, we know for sure that some of his followers are pretty um, fanatic, and they might kill kill the <clears throat> one he criticizes. So I put a gag order. And so far, it hasn't worked that well because Trump was never, you know, contained by. You. By law, courts or laws or anything, and as you said, it often has the opposite effect. Telling him he can't talk yeah. just infuriates people who say he should be able to talk. Look, he, he doesn't you know. listen. He doesn't listen to anybody. It's not influenced by his own sister and his own niece. Wrote books critical of him, saying how bad he is and everything. Speaking of books, how about? How about Liz Cheney's new book, Oath and Honor, a Memoir and a Warning? So she just uh, came out with a book about Trump, about, well, about, not just about Trump, about the whole Yeah, about the trial that, that she was, uh, and about the, she was only the, the only, the, one the, of two Republicans that put the committee party. that she was on. Yeah. What happened, where she was, what she's doing on January 6th. Um, she lost her, she lost her, uh, Influence in the Republican Party after that, they threw her off all the committees, and then she lost her seat completely. In or what state is she from? Wyoming. 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 Um, she's. She, but you know, she has a lot of people that are fond of her, including me. Uh, I I don't <clears throat> think it's going to have any impact at all. The people that are MAGA are so committed to Trump, there's nothing, even if he's convicted and goes to jail, if anything, they'd be more for him. They'd say it's, it's, it's just what Trump says. Political it's, persecution. It's persecution. Yeah. It's, you know, so I don't think it's going to happen. Even though, even though it's a bestseller, and she's she's a respected Republican. Yeah, you know, it's not My like was it's not like right. you know, it's not like a liberal right. newscaster or, was a, or somebody yeah, like that. Father was a very this is someone who was right. and a Trump supporter. Yeah, at least on this, you know, right. policies as were a lot. I mean, even um, her book, her book, in my view, what's his name? Well, that, Almost zero impact. <clears throat> It'll be 
you know, popular bestseller because people want to learn about what she says and she has information that's intriguing and and even uh, I like yeah, I mean, it's preaching to the choir for people who believed it before she wrote the book. Yeah, and it's it's just uh, this dismissed yeah. by people who don't want to believe it. So, yeah. you know, it's sad because uh, when, the, when the, the biggest damage, I think, to the country, no matter what happens, is just the, the, the degradation of people's uh, belief in yeah. the integrity of the courts of the elections, I mean, there was, you know, I just saw it was watching the other day, there was a guy who the Trump team hired to investigate uh, election fraud, and they had him on the, uh, interviewing him, and what'd you find? Well, nothing. So it doesn't matter, because people's faith, you know, it's like, it's like why a dollar bill is worth anything, it's not backed by anything. It's just your faith and credit in the country. And mm -hmm. when that gets diminished, it hurts. And it's unfortunate because, you know, no matter what happens in the court, Trump could be very fairly tried yeah. and very fairly found guilty by, a, you know, a real fair trial. And, mm -hmm. People who don't want to believe that it should have been won't believe it was. Don't have faith in the in the process, and that's unfortunate because then it has no meaning. Like if, if very much like the uh, the books written by his niece and his sister were very critical of him, and his, their appearance on so many talk shows that was was so critical of him. Say he's selfish, he's greedy, he's a massacre. It just, just uh, 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 I mean, a massacre is not self love. Narcissist. Narcissist. He's a narcissist. They said that the word stands, he should never be president, it has zero impact. Zero. They said they're just angry, they're, they're jealous, of, I don't know what the word, and they're, they're saying how, how cruel he is, his own family, how selfish. Yeah. But, but he did, uh, Trump did say that uh, on, on radio, Access something was the name of the show. Access. What, Billy Bush? Yeah. Access Hollywood. Access Hollywood. So Trump testified that he's liked by, by people, women, when he reaches under their dress and grabs their, uh, <laughs> their private parts, so and he's testifying. I mean, I love when he, when he comes back from uh, Russia and meeting with with uh, um, Putin years ago, and he was accused of uh, Russia was supposedly accused of. Helping him, helping him win the election, and he said, "No, I spoke to uh, Putin, and Putin totally denies it." That would be Why great. Wouldn't I believe him. That, yeah, I, I believe him. Right. So that's like uh, what, what, what murder of it, or what spy that we get caught? <laughs> the spies get caught in Russia. We can catch those spies. They would say he's not a spy. He's not. So there was never a spy. One time a guy had said, yeah, I, was, I am a spy. Then they, they would say, I'm not a spy. So murderers always say, I didn't do it. Uh, you know, so you should believe them. How about the latest? How about you? Would you swear on the Bible? <clears throat> yeah. Well, so, so look, you know they didn't do it if they swear on the Bible. <clears throat> and and it, it really is a, a situation of doubling and tripling and quadrupling down like Trump's most recent comment about migrants poisoning the blood of our country um, you know for a lot of people that would be for a lot of politicians that would be a career limiting 
ending, a no. career ending right. statement. Nothing Trump the says opposite. could ever be it. The opposite. Right. It's, it's, that's, a, you know, a lot of people that's, that's exactly part. what is the case. Um, right. You know, migrants right. are poisoning. Right. Look at what's, you know, and then it's the if border. You didn't realize, if you didn't realize that almost every one of us is a migrant, except the Indians, everybody came from another country and built this country and uh, they make big contributions. You know, when you have so many that are entering illegally and we're not prepared for them, that has to be addressed. But they've made a major contribution. In California, they were actually popular because they couldn't, uh, uh, you know, uh, what's the word? Develop their crops, couldn't, couldn't pick their crops, harvest. Or couldn't harvest their crops because uh, the native people, our own citizens, our own uh, inhabitants, are not up for it. It doesn't pay enough. Uh, it's hard work. It's hot out there all day. So they're in favor of these Mexicans and whoever from the uh, various countries coming in. Up. You know, the, another, I just thought of another instance where the Supreme Court will probably get involved is on immigration, Governor Abbott in Texas just signed a bill, a law that says it's a state crime to enter Texas illegally. Yeah. And that's a constitutional issue because it's a federal, immigration is a, a federal issue or jurisdiction or whatever. So whether but i think that's that's a you know a political move to again highlight what's becoming i think now that inflation is cooling off it's harder for you know for trump and other republicans to argue how bad the economy is you know when people say inflation's coming down and you know the data supports that you know the response is well that's, you know, just go to the grocery store and you see how expensive yeah, everything well, selectively, is. Yeah, well, selectively, nobody. It's, it's, it's the thing that touches most people directly yeah. is when they go to the grocery. Yeah. But even if inflation and is eggs zero. And eggs and, no, but the most important things that they purchase, eggs and meat and stuff. But like. even if inflation were zero, meaning the rate of price increase is zero, yeah. that doesn't mean that prices are not high. That's, the, you know... That's not going to go away. They're not coming down. They may not be going up as much, but they're not coming down. No, but and if so they stay at they zero, use that, if they stayed at zero, no, but, but and if had, they were the same four years, four years ago, they wouldn't be right, angry. But, right. They're but, angry because now they can't afford it. That yeah, touches them. Even though, even though people say inflation is coming down, People don't understand that that yeah, is not that's prices price coming yeah. down. It's just the way that no, they're going up. Even prices are coming down, but also industry is taking advantage of it. And the other thing where people are touched directly and almost universally, uh, almost everybody, is gasoline prices. And now they're saying that gasoline prices, oil is going to go way up again because all the ships in the... Middle East, excuse me, are being held up, and so they 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 won't be shipping as much oil from the major source, a major source for the world. So it's it's unbelievable the things that hurt. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I think Biden has mishandled that anyway because he should have put the pressure on OPEC to to be competitive, not to be a cartel or a monopoly that penalizes the Americans. It's the biggest external tax on the human race. And just uh, before we went on to this uh, podcast, I just saw an American, um, a Chinese uh, diplomat tell an American uh, liaison that we're going to take over Taiwan, if, if, if that were Biden and, and his people and, the, <clears throat> and all Americans or all the politicians say, is 
we won that and we, we were going to defend Taiwan. That means we're in for another major war. Why would they do that? That would be a major, major war. Well, that is that an official yeah. policy yeah. of the Chinese government saying no, we're going to take no, an, an, communicate it's through an official, the diplomat? It's an official policy of the U.S. to stop it. Right. No. Why is that? Is, why, why, I'm asking you. Why is that our business? You know. Why? Why? Why should we go to war and sacrifice our people? Us. I know. I know. We need things from Taiwan. Even the Taiwanese are the biggest investors in China. But why would the diplomat it? say that? It's, and it, it's and telling, why would it, he's telling you, don't, it, don't, it, don't think, you know, you, you're, you're threatening us that you're going to fight us in ta Taiwan. I want to tell you that's not influencing us. That's not, not a bad thing to tell them. Just like the, uh, Biden, uh, Putin said, if you put, the, if you let, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, um, Ukraine, Ukraine uh, join uh, uh, NATO, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack NATO. But if you not, I'll attack Ukraine. And we, and uh, if you don't, then uh, I won't. So they said, well, but you can't appease them. You can't, you know. So we wound up now in a, in a war that we're really committed to. I mean, you know, and also we're committed, we've committed the whole NATO and the Europeans. The Europeans aren't happy, or at least some of them are very unhappy with it, with that decision that they have to go to war against Russia because of this commitment that NATO... So the Ukraine aid runs out at the end of the year. Yeah. Should the U.S. just let it run out? Well, yeah, we can we can make it our war. Uh, we could give, and we've already spent billions, right. and it's, uh, they're up for getting many billions more. Mm. Much, you know. So if you don't do anything, what, what they're talking about for Israel is a, maybe a billion six or some, and for Ura uh, Ukraine. Many billions. Times that, yes. You know, so. But you, you sort of faced with the, you, you can't ignore this. You, you, you have to make a decision. Even a do nothing decision is a decision. Because if you, if you don't pass this aid package, then that's the same thing as, you know, turning your back on Ukraine and well, letting them do whatever maybe, they may do. Maybe, so you're do make a, maybe you make an accommodation and stop it in place or let the Russians keep what they want so far and and just end it. Because it, it doesn't seem like it's well, been on for years. But but so then you have to you have to negotiate some sort of end. Yeah, as yeah. opposed to just saying we're not going to still the end of the year is coming. So Specifically, you have to address that issue, and if you don't, if you don't give them more aid at the end of the year, then well, there's you know, a lot of Republicans out. that are getting aggressive <clears throat> in terms of their resistance to more. It's based more on you can't spend that much money, but they're even more aggressive against giving more to Ukraine than they are against giving more money to Israel. And there's plenty of that, especially in the Democratic Party, about, you know, ending. Uh, somebody today asked a very good question. He said, how come uh, the United States and all these other countries are not asking the, um, the aggressor? For a ceasefire? No, they could end it in, in one hour. By just surrendering and returning the hostages, and so, why are they putting out all, all the onus on on Israel to, to cease fire and let them, uh, re, 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 you know, rearm and do? You know, they, they were the aggressor, and all the criticism is coming to Israel. All the all the children they're killing, all the it's so outrageous. The UN has been supporting. I don't know how much. You should look that up. I think it's 
at least a billion dollars a year and, and, and supporting the to people. Gaza, and, and, most of which goes to Hamas. Well, even if it goes to the people <clears throat> legitimately, you know, it's many years. Why doesn't one Arab country open? I, I asked my brother that. He said, well, that, that's not an issue. You know, uh, about three, I think about three quarters of a million Jews were, were literally, you know, driven out of adjacent Muslim countries, Middle East countries. And a little, a tiny country like Israel took them all in, integrated them. There's not one Arab country that they say, you know, that the Israelis drove them down to the south, tell them if they go south, they won't hit them because we're fighting in the north. So now they're south. Now where do they go? There's no place for them to go. There's a lots of places for them to go. If Egypt just opened the gates, they could take in, I don't know, maybe a quarter million. If Poland's taken in, uh, what, two million uh, or more uh, Ukrainians. There's not one country, one Arab country, one Muslim country that has invited the people that want to leave uh, either the, the Palestine or Gaza. Not one country wants to take them in. And, and nobody criticizes them. They're only putting the onus on Israel. Why don't, why don't you give them a state? They try to give them a state. They say uh, they want, they don't say it. They don't say we want a one state solution, but that's what they describe. Israel should get out. I don't know what the, I don't know if you ever looked at the charter of, uh, of uh, I'm sure Arafat must add something like that, which was, uh, you know, the charter of the of uh, Hamas's uh, get rid of Israel totally and kill all the Jews. It's not even just Israel, you know. So, did, did you ever check of uh, what the Palestinian charter or the earlier Arafat charter said? The, Was it similar? P, the Palestinian Authority, the PA charter. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it's as harsh. <clears throat> um, but anyway, we are out of time. Are we out of time? Yes. So. Oh my God! Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> we didn't even address. See, you said it wasn't going to be fun. We, we didn't even address <laughs> any part of this. Well, is there anything urgent that we didn't address here? Hey, They're all urgent. We, we addressed the last chapter. Issues we can chat. We can. Uh, you're you're asked about the Ukraine. <laughs> around. Should Israel be more careful and be forced on how to save certain <laughs> children's life as President Biden requests? I don't know. There's not another country in the world that is careful about not hurting civilians as, as the state of Israel is. Not one country notifies of bombings of, and we're so critical. So, we're the ones, we forget, we're the ones that drop atom bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, where we killed only civilians. I don't know how many, but was it a million or less or more? Uh, I mean, and initially it was 100,000, but then many more through disease and radiation. Poisoning. Radiation, yeah, many more. But even 100,000 is a big number of all civilians, you know. We didn't notify them to get out, you know. I don't think we noticed, notified civilians in Afghanistan or Iraq to get out. You know, what we do is, is because we're doing under God's, God's will, what we feel very selective, selected, you know, we have a, a righteousness that's unbelievable. Whatever we do is okay. It is okay if you're an American and you believe in that, but we, we didn't ever follow the Monroe Doctrine, or maybe for many years we did. We had a chance to have our own war and kill each other 
during the Civil War, so we didn't have to go outside. But we're the most involved in other wars than any other country in the world. And we're the peace-loving the United States and, and, and what did Reagan say? And they still say, repeat it over and over again when they work on the uh, budget for the, for the military, the defense budget, that a, a strong uh, defense or a strong military yeah. or a strong uh, avoids war. Peace through strength. Peace through strength. Strong offense is the yeah. best defense. Peace, peace through yeah. strength. Yeah. And we found that we're the, the strongest and we have the least peace. <laughs> what peace? Yeah. Peace through strength. I've got to remember that. Peace through strength. Maybe we should end with the happiness note instead of starting yeah, it. But right. anyway. Have a happy week. I love you all. Thank you for participating. I look forward to being with you 6.30 p.m. next Wednesday. Have a wonderful every week of your life, every day of your life. Each day should be better than the day before for all of you until you're 120. And after that, I'll negotiate for more for you. God bless you. Be happy, don't worry. And get a copy of this book. If you don't love it, not like it, if you don't love it, Send it back to me, and I'll give you double back double what you paid for. Unless I get a million books <laughs> care, back. But really, I haven't gotten one book back with that promise. All right. If you need an address to send it to, I'll give you that too. Okay? God bless you. Be happy. Don't worry. It's attitudinal. It's your attitude. Don't think.